from looking right here, it looks like they did everything right. So there's a chance that maybe we have a TXV acting up possibly and it's holding it back. We'll just have to see here. I don't, I don't know for certain what it is just yet. All right guys, so we've got a two story house here. Basically it's got two systems, both of the same size. Last year they said it worked just fine. So I get here, I check the filter, I check the coil, you know, make sure everything's working upstairs. The problem is it works one day, but when it gets hotter, it starts to act up. So I get the gauges hooked up to see what's going on. And what you can see here is we're running between 536 and she'll jump up even higher. The outdoor temperature right now today is about 91 degrees. And this is gonna peak up there again because I wanna show you what happens when these things are overcharged. You're about 50 degrees over ambient. Now your superheat is 12 degrees. This just goes to show you, TXV does its job. It basically just keeps track of the uh, superheat. It doesn't care. So it's holding that refrigerant back, which is stacking it in the condenser there. And then your subcooling goes skyrocketing high. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna yank some out of this thing and we're gonna see how much it actually is overcharged by to kind of see where we're at. I went ahead and just used the probes here. We're just dumping it in our tank. We're gonna take this thing down a little bit just to see where we end up at. The required subcooling is 10 degrees. So to say the least, we're just a touch high. We're gonna pull a little bit out here and kind of just see where we're at. Total charge on this thing is only three and a quarter pounds. For this one here, we got a 55 foot line set and they added one pound, 10 ounces. Generally, these things are charged for 15 foot. So if you take 15 foot off of 55, so 55 minus 15, which is pretty cut and dry, it's 40 foot. Take that times 0. 0.6 ounces, which is what your 3 8 line is. It should be about two pound or 24 ounces. So subtract 16 off of that. That'd be one pound, eight ounces, and they added one pound, 10 ounces. So they've added about the right amount for it. So there's a chance we may have some issues with this unit. Now, I did wash the condenser coil when I got here, first thing I did, because the back side was pretty dirty and you can't really get any good clean measurements unless your coils are clean. I mean, that's just pretty cut and dry. Don't even bother trying to set up your superheat subcooling and all that jazz, unless your coils are clean. So, from looking right here, it looks like they did everything right. So there's a chance that maybe we have a TXV acting up possibly, and it's holding it back. We'll just have to see here. I don't, I don't know for certain what it is just yet. We're just kind of starting out at the beginning point here. We've taken out eight ounces, and we've got still a 32 degree subcooling. 410's kind of irrational as far as the way it uh, reacts. You rush this stuff a little too quickly and she'll uh, bite you in the pooper. Set it right there. Maybe a little more accurate. Yeah, it's a little bit better. So 97, 107, 117. Hey, look at that. Old Bill Russell had a new photo. Now we're at a 25 degree sub cooling. So we're still high on our head there. Our super, our super heat is still hanging right in there at 12. Sub coolings came down to 27. We've removed 11 ounces so far. I'm gonna let it stabilize a little bit. We'll probably have to take a little bit more out. Now, one thing I do wanna mention right away, you can see where I sanded it on both sides of my filter dryer. First thing I did was check a drop across that, and I had none. Um, usually they say up to three degrees. Still going just a little bit further yet. Pressure's looking a lot better. You notice we're not seeing a lot of swinging on the high side or even the low side, generally. Uh, when it's massively overcharged, you'll be swinging up and down, up and down. So I didn't check the beforehand amperage, but the compressor's at 6.1 to 6.2, which is pretty good. And then far as the fan, we're rolling it right in there at 0 0.5, 0 0.6. Right there's 10. We're gonna let it stabilize for certain and uh, go ahead and take our temp drops. So there it is, 11. It's feeding a little bit there. Superheat, if you noticed, uh, it was 12 to 13 before, and now we're at 14. Uh, still need to double check this downstairs one just to be certain. That way you don't come back later for, you know, same thing. That, that would be bad. 
So we went ahead and got the probes installed. I'm not real impressed with the split, but this is in the attic and I'm not able to hang these on the plastic registers real well. Got a 12.6 degree drop across the coil. I'm gonna probably place the probe in a couple different spots. That way I know that it's not just, you know, the system's fan maybe going too uh, fast or whatever. This is probably the easiest I've ever seen to get into an attic, which is kind of nice for being an attic. Not every day we gotta get up here because we actually have basements here. So we're gonna jump, drop this fan speed down notch because it's, uh, I think it's a default high speed. So we're gonna try, see if we can get them a little better humidification. It is an ECM motor. Should be easy to change this thing right around. We can get into it here. Heat and cool. Cool's on white. What the hell is white? Yeah, gray. I'm sorry. Gray is cool. So I'm going to assume that gray is probably the highest. Blue is heat. So we're going to go to yellow, which will be one notch down. And that should help out a touch. I'm going to see if my off timing is here. I hate furnaces that are set for the minimum. I always like to run longer, especially when you're horizontal or downflow. I'm gonna take it one under the longest, about 150 seconds. If you want to eliminate extra problem calls later, it does not hurt to run that fan a little longer. That has been my motto for a long time, because I've had several times where you're uh, there and they have a big air bear style filter or something like that and it's counter flow meaning it blows down and the radiant heat just comes up and bounces off that filter and then ends up tripping a limit and then the furnace ends up locking out for something so. all right we went ahead and checked the sub cooling on this one it was at 12 so that's close enough for me usually you have a two to three degree differential so I don't know why the one was a little out of whack, but it's right now. So I did have to adjust the fan down one more time. So we're kind of waiting to see what it drops down to. It's just now came on. So we're gonna see what that uh, split comes out to be in now. Um, just didn't seem like it, one or two speeds was enough. So we went ahead and went uh, one from the slowest. We'll see where we're at. Hopefully we don't have something weird going on with the uh, unit that uh, hopefully it's just maybe got charged in the winter time or something like that i'm not sure basically if we start getting a good split then i'm going to be happy and everything should be good to go and we can get on down the road to the next call so airflow is still coming out pretty strong not horribly bad so that's good it's gotten up to 13.6 13.7 it's been running for probably about five minutes or so but uh i don't know so it's a lot better than what it was. We're going to get a little bit more dehumidification out of it. If you guys like the video and you want to see more like it, please give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to leave a comment down below. Check out the links. And if you want to support the channel, I have Patreon and links to the tools that I use. Till next time, guys. Have a good one. Good night. Bye-bye. God bless. All right, guys. we got us a 15KW heater here. I wanted to point out something I found. Uh, the customer called in said he was smelling something uh, electrical. So I checked my amp draw on each individual circuit, and we were pulling about the 21 amps per circuit, which is pretty common with a 5KW strip. So I tested them one per time because this is an infinity system, so you can test it one, two, and three. Well, the way it's wired up, it's one strip for low, and then the outside two are your high, which technically they're calling it medium. Well, I didn't have any trip breakers or anything else, but once I pulled out the electric strips, I wanted to point something out here. As you can see, they've broke and they've literally welded themselves to it. You can see that's welded to it. Well, the reason why it didn't break, the reason why it didn't trip the breaker is because this is a resistive short to ground in all reality. Uh, so basically it would have been about 120 volts to ground in all reality because it only had one side of power Here the way this was broke the reason why we didn't have uh, Amperage on it when it was shut down Your one leg comes through and is wired directly to your Breaker well that breaker leg comes up 
comes to here and it was broke there. So that's your constant hot leg because they're only breaking one leg here. So this leg obviously couldn't get anything to ground or through the coil, so you had no amp draw at all. But on your leg that's broke between your uh, relay here that breaks the other leg, just one leg, it was actually going through and was shorting the ground. Well, you wouldn't have anything because the relay opens up when this unit sh shuts down. So technically you wouldn't have any smell when the fan's not running, you know, as far as it just sitting there smoldering or whatever. And like I said, because this stuff has uh, got resistance to it, it's not the same as a dead short. This is not just regular wire. This is a special uh, resistive, resistive element um, type wire. So um, that's something I wanted to point out to, for you to always visually check your strip heat if you have something weird uh, going on as far as a weird smell or something. So it's just one of those oddities there. I just wanted to point it out real quick. Just a, uh, a quick uh, tech tip, I suspect you could call it that. And uh, something to keep an eyeball out for.